Night Podcast. We are live with our first interview, our very own Peeny. And I'm not going to say your last name. I'll let you say your last name to us in a second. But the reason why uh, we have you on today is because in your own background as an AI researcher, you've, you've now led a team doing AI research, AI practitioners. You've seen the, the AI journey from its infancy, earliest days, the basic building blocks of a team and scaling that team up. Uh, and all the challenges that come with it. Um, so you have, you've, just through your own work, you've accumulated a lot of thoughts and, and knowledge and what's going on in the world of, of deep learning, in particular AI. Um, and we wanted to pick your brain today. So thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. Our pleasure. Um, so why don't you give a little bit of a, a background in your your connection to AI and even maybe what precedes that, who you are, what, what makes you curious in life uh, in, as it, and how you got into AI. Okay, so I'm Pin Solomovich. Um, in my uh, last organization, actually I started from big data. Um, for my whole career, I was involved in data. And uh, after like uh, five years in uh, big data, uh, I got in a new position, uh, like we uh, built a new uh, group for AI research. How big was that group? What? How big was that group? Uh, like uh, 10 researchers. Okay. Uh, we were focusing uh, speech analytics and uh, it was like seven years ago. And when we just started, everything was new, brand new. We didn't have like uh, former researchers that made so uh, some progress and we need to copy from them. We just need to find uh, academic uh, researchers and to take it from academic to a business level uh, products. So when we started from a brand new uh, uh, research and we tried to build a product from it, it was really tough, you know. Now we can say that any research start from building a model and then training it uh, to take it to production level. And in those days, we couldn't know what is the journey that we're gonna pass. We just so you were along a road that you didn't know where it was taking you per se. Yeah, and what I can say is that it was really frustrating. Was it scary? Yeah. Were you scared in how you're going to demonstrate that you're adding value? Yeah, because like the organization took the 10th best uh, researchers that they got and they gave us like a really tough challenge and we didn't know if we can, we can make it. Even us that we had like a lot of passion and a lot of knowledge, we didn't know if our research gonna end in a, a real product. So after two years in uh, this group, I uh, got uh, into like uh, a infrastructure uh, department that our mission was to take all the little groups that started uh, to research and to get into AI, their AI journeys and to help them to with their struggling of taking the models from research to production level from training to inference exactly mm -hmm. and it was really amazing to see that most of the groups had the same challenges and with our experience we helped them to get all the obstacles out and to manage to make a lot of profits from their AI models. And actually, now six uh, years uh, after, I can say that this organization uh, is proud to, to be data-centric and there is, they are saying that every product they are gonna uh, uh, product is AI-based. Everything, everything they're gonna produce is gonna be based on AI research. 
Yeah. Every product that they're going to produce is based on AI research. Yeah. Nice. So that's uh, cool. Thanks for the foundation uh, introduction into you. Um, I think you and Highs have already spoken about what you really want to talk about today a little bit. Absolutely. We, d we did some prep work. And so, and it's, it's very interesting. I mean, your past experiences and what you've achieved in, in previous roles basically got you to the role you're in now, which to me is a very interesting one. So could you talk a little bit about what you're doing right now? And, and yes, disclaimer, he is one of our coworkers. We're very proud to have him on board, but um, it, he's, he's very important to run AI as well. But I think, I think, in his current role, he brings some some very interesting insight. So, but I'll I'll let you talk a little bit about your role, PD. Okay, so I'm the head of innovation in uh, Run AI, and actually, as I see it, uh, AI shouldn't be like uh, only enterprise level uh, product. It's like the internet twenty years ago. The anyone who used the internet said that. Okay, now I'm going to use the internet to communicate with someone. But now, anyone can use the internet everywhere for everything. Actually, we are podcasting this live through you, through the internet. Mm -hmm. And we are not saying that we are recording the podcast through the internet because it's you don't need to say that you're using the, in the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's known. <laughs> yeah, it's known. Right. As I see it, five years or ten years from now, everyone will use AI the same. And it's going to be like... Everyone meaning children, grandparents... Everyone. I think regardless of where you are located on the globe. Yeah. Not just experts. Everyone. Actually, in every aspect of our life, AI is going to be involved. We're going to wake up through AI clock that will wake up when it's the suitable time for us to wake up. And you don't need to put like uh, the microwave for 30 uh, seconds. Uh, you just need to put the meat or your food in the microwave and it will be in the best temperature. And I think that in these days, we're gonna like do the things that uh, make it uh, five years and not 10 years from now. We want to get this future really faster. And uh, I want to do uh, everything uh, to get uh, anyone the, the chance to uh, start today uh, uh, their uh, AI journey and to make it the fastest they can have it without any obstacle or it's and it's 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 interesting because you you said something very interesting you said we're not saying we're recording this through the internet or using the internet because hey it's like a, it's not a th it's a thing it's, if people understand it it's it's fine i think i think ai is becoming the same thing right now because um i mean as I, I'm, I'm very aware, I've, I've, I know artificial intelligence, I know the technologies behind it, like NLP, computer vision, those kind of things, but my kids have no clue. They walk downstairs, they say, hey, Google, turn on the, the lights, but they have no clue that there's like, um, like speak recognition technology behind it, powered by AI models, they're clueless. And I think that's, that's definitely what's going to happen, right? Is that- Exactly. We're going to take this technology kind of, I'm not sure if it's the right word, but hey, Dutch, so not native English, but we're going to take it for granted, right? It's like, yeah. it's there, um, but it is going to make a difference. I think right now, me cooking pasta in the, the kitchen is like very boring, but I used to have like this, this, like this, uh, um, this clock, this timer. It's so like, spit it up 10 minutes. Great. Um, then I switch to my phone, right? Using the the clock and the timer on my phone. Right now, it's like, hey, Google, set timer for ten minutes. Um, it's and it, it it's changing the way I even do my 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 groceries. Like, open up the fridge. Hey, there's no milk. 
hey Google, put milk on the shopping list, right? And 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 that's the that's the interesting part of it, right? It's really going to be um, the way that people will integrate it into their lives. Um, and and the faster we can do it, uh, the better. And and these are just like day to day things, right? I think when you look at AI and the difference it's going to make in healthcare in um, uh, safety on roads with like autonomous driving, there's, there's, there's such a broad way of applying it. And like, like you said, like the, the, the previous department you worked for, like anything they will do is like AI powered. I think that's definitely the future. And, um, building a team, probably very bright minds that you hired. Do you think that as all of humanity benefits from AI in the next few years without even thinking about it, do you think also becoming an AI practitioner is something that's going to be more accessible to to more people? Because at, at present, it seems to be a, a fairly prestigious thing to do. Maybe it'll stay that way. Because maybe the challenges in how to be a researcher in AI are so intellectually involved. Is that the right word? Um, you know, so challenging. Or do you think that if somebody wakes up and says, boom, I really want to, you know, kind of get, st like, learn how to, how deep learning works and try to do some deep learning, is it something that's, that's accessible? Absolutely. Will there be building blocks that can make it more and more accessible to everybody? Absolutely. That's what I'm. Uh, um, when I'm saying that everyone will use AI, I'm not just saying that they are going to use products which there there is AI. Not just benefit AI. from them. Yeah, they. It's going to be much accessible from them. You know, now if you want to get involved in AI, the prerequisites are really high. You need to be an expert in right. AI to get in this stuff, and also. Most of the experts fail in their journey to get a beneficial product at the end of the journey. Most of them stop in the research and start another research. You know, like I, I know that uh, three years ago, Google uh, made an article that we're saying that 87% of the research ends without any product. Or a uh, successful result. So there, can I tell you why I asked this question, guys? Yeah. Guys, I don't know. Maybe you're thinking like, what? So my brother has a friend who now has a 14-year-old. And this 14-year-old from the age uh, 10 or 11, each summer when he would go to summer camp, you know, I'm used to going to summer camp and doing nonsense, you know, eating a lot of candy and sugar and playing sports. This young man or this young boy, this boy goes to now a teenager, fell in love with HTML at the age of 10 or 11. And then each year he had a summer camp guidance counselor getting him more and more into like kind of like a junior software developer. And, and I think to myself, like, that can't be possible. He's 14. And maybe there's certain things that are like more out of the box for for somebody to do to do you know HTML whatever nowadays compared to 20 years ago but if you we look 20 years from now is that could a do you see where I'm going with this could there be a similar thing that plays out with like how we can maybe independently do AI research yeah you know in every so line, that's kind of scary kind of cool and scary you know, with the great power, great uh, becomes a, a great responsibility. Right. But I think that um, one of the the thing is that in each uh, lunch that I'm meeting with my friends, there is at least one guy with really great idea of a new startup. Like uh, <laughs> he knows how to f fix the traffic problems, and the, the other one have a great idea how to get uh, uh, like a uh, um, air flight uh, uh, much cheaper and uh, if they just add the ability to try it to take their ideas 
and to build a model without any uh, necessity of uh, expertise in AI. Our world will be much better, much faster. You know, like um, I think six, year ago, six years ago, uh, I got into a friend who said to me, I have the best solution for the uh, uh, problem of the uh, accessing into uh, the huge buildings in Manhattan. You know, uh, like 10 years ago, the, the huge problem was the traffic in the elevators. But then after they upgrade most of the elevators, you know what uh, was the the barrier? What what was the, the traffic uh, jam? Mm. No the speed gates, where they need to put their finger on to uh, get access in the building. So I thought, oh, I know they have like twenty seconds between the outer gate into the speed gates. We can use AI to recognize most of the people, and then we can get the root of this uh, traffic jam. You know how much time he, need, he, he, he uh, put into researchers uh, uh, and to find out a way to check his, to check his uh, hypothesis? It was like eight months. And in this whole time, it just started from learning how to uh, use uh, uh, Kubernetes to uh, uh, build a model and then uh, uh, it tried to, uh, to deploy a model into a production environment just to check if it can use the uh, uh, CV uh, computer vision, computer vision. Uh, models in this problem like he got in the models from NGC or what what's his what's his back he's a, he who what is this person's background a developer is a developer is familiar with uh, um, c computer science yeah he knows how to build would you software. say he's an AI researcher per se um, actually he does he, he wasn't uh, familiar with AI and that's what so amazing that if he got the tools that we were talking about like the tools that give him a software engineer not AI researcher the ability to access pre-trained models and to test them he could uh, do it not in eight months like in one week he could just deploy his models launch some tests and then you you got like a, a ready production ready uh, product so i think i heard this correctly at, at a conference just before covid started and i want to I don't know if I've ever said this to you, Heis, but so I want to run this past you. So I was at a conference and there was a big shot from one of the auto companies, a big shot in their AI, you know, global AI team. And he said, most of the time uh, in these discussions, we, we focus on either training the models or production, you know, the inferencing side, this is more, I guess, prestigious or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But I want to I want to sit here and, and suggest to the audience that actually the first step, this is the big game changer in the world, the the boring step of data collection and organizing cleansing. Why is because the more that this is essentially done for all of humanity, where there's there's stable formulas that ensure that. The data is pre-packaged, clean, clean, and it's it's just ready off the shelf, and anybody can take it, and then go straight into training. This is the more that this is um, accessible, the 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 cleanse data, the and and the more that it's accessible, and if you will, like you can just take it straight off the shelf, like a carton of milk. Uh, that's the game changer, especially if we can do it as the world of big data is ever more, you know, ever expansive. Do you agree with that? Do you think that ties into this? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the major challenges in AI is all the data preparation. I totally agree that to get all the data prepared, pre-prepared, it's much easier. But I think 
it's not the only barrier. You know that in nowadays, if uh, anyone wants to get into AI, it needs a lot of money to buy accelerators like uh, GPU or uh, even to use it uh, on cloud. Uh, the costs are tremendous and uh, anyone who wants to use GPUs needs to learn how to do it and how to do it correctly and if he doesn't know how to do it like he needs to spend a lot of time and a lot, a lot of his budget budgets on just learning how to use it correctly he knows you know that I think that there are thousands of uh, products, MLOps uh, products, that tries to help the researcher to use all these tools correctly um, in the most efficient and effective way. Um, the ever-changing tool stack of AI researchers. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, spend like a, a, a week in learning them, you get another one in this week. You know, uh, it's yeah. amazing. They're like, uh, and, and, and they are, a, a, any uh, ML Ops tool uh, has its own advantages and uh, they are really amazing tools that really can help uh, um, the researcher got into uh, uh, the training, uh, mo uh, training level really fast. I think that uh, right now, as you said, most of the organizations stuck in training and just few of them are using a models uh, for inferencing like in production uh, environments and i think that the biggest challenge is to take the model from training into inferencing yeah yeah i, I think that's the would you have thought that heis well it's, it it matches the the numbers we see out there, right? Um, yeah. And, and the, the the one thing that I, I'd like to add, because you you had this this interesting um, mention about the summer camp and HTML and and, and learning stuff. Sorry, and so I, I no 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 it's it's so I feel that that's becoming less of a problem as into how they will apply AI to something, and the reason why is because I think. Nowadays, and if I, I, I'm not here to give anyone parenting advice, but I, I think I, I read an article once somewhere that they said, if there's one skill that you should give your kids right now, or at least teach them, it's coding. Yeah. And right. The, the, I'm, and I, I pre, I'm pretty sure it's an international thing, but there, there's a thing called coder dojos, which I think any, any, anywhere like eight, eight years old and up, it's like a weekly gathering of kids coding um it's in our eight local library up. eight years and up it's in our local library my son is doing it and he's actually he's, he's being taught python right now so i think uh, and as more and more people understand You're eight, this, whoa, hold on and i guess this is not a big deal or many people are gonna be listening to this and you're like yeah no sh no kidding i'm stunned to hear that you have an eight-year-old who's learning python Yes, he is. He is on those coder dojos in a very fun way, um, linking it to games. But they, I mean, they have topics like uh, collision detection in games, right? Because how do, how do I know if my character hit a brick or something like that, right? So I, I think the the you no, could this dojos in the future? You, can you see an eight year old like doing NLP basics? At the library, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be um, surprised if 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 the answer is yes. I mean, I I remember myself. I was. I I, I might be the weird one here, but I was coding at age seven on like a laser seven hundred system with like a course in basic um, typing over like lines and lines of codes to a code to to um, code a game, which I never played. So, but it's, um, and, and so kids nowadays are being brought up with this coding and, and also the way of thinking, like the analytical way of thinking, which I think in, in the future will have no shortage of people that know how to apply models to something 
I think the challenge, and this is where that's, that's the interesting part, right? Uh, without looking like 10 years in the future, but the problem right now is how do we, and I think um, democratizing is like the, 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 the proper term for this. How do we- Democratize. Yeah, democratize access to AI, right? How do we democratize AI so that anyone that wants yeah. to use it can use it? And with all these shortages in the world right now, like chips, GPUs, accelerators, power, there the focus, yes, data is the number one issue. I think uh, there, without proper, without good data, their uh, AI models are will fail. Um, but let's let's say that's sold. Um, the next one is how do I actually get the resources to do this, right? And I think that, that that's the interesting piece. And of course, where it's very much linked to run AI, but um, like like you mentioned, Penny, and 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 this would be my question: if we look a little bit more short term, right? Because you're ahead of innovation. Of course, yeah. you would like to look five, 10, 15 years from now, but let's look a year from now. What are some of the innovations you see in AI happening in AI and then not necessarily in like things we're going to do with AI, but to how to make AI easier and more accessible to people? Okay, so as I said, there is now a really uh, big uh, wave of going uh, onto the cloud environments and it's much easier to go using cloud because cloud environments gives you the ability to access GPUs, for instance, without any uh, big costs. You can just try using your models. And I think that right now, uh, what we can give our customers or potential customers to give them the ability to access GPUs and just deploy their model is like giving them the it calls like uh, I have to call it a uh, serverless infer inference when they can just drop their models and try it and then drop another model because you know and then go home without thinking yeah, about yeah. their infrastructure just can I give some context maybe people might be listening who don't have a background in in computer hardware so once historically a company would buy very expensive servers where and they would host it on their own office at their own office site or uh, called on-prem hardware or on-prem compute but what's happening increasingly is large organizations even universities are opting to instead of owning and operating their own hardware i guess if you will renting from big cloud providers the Google, the Googles, the Amazons, of course, and Microsoft Azure as a few prominent examples. That pivot has been happening at an accelerating rate recently. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. And also we can see that uh, most of the startups that um, for, yeah. don't, doesn't have like a big budget are starting in the cloud because- And they may not have a huge IT organization. Yeah, to, exactly. They don't need anyone who, who manage their IT because the IT is managed by the cloud provider. So actually, uh, if anyone wants to get involved and try some models, you can just look in Google and uh, like search for uh, NLP model or uh, a face recognition model, and you will find in the internet a lot of models, pre-trained uh, pre models. And now they don't have the ability to try these models just because the barrier of cost of accelerators. Yeah, and hardware. also uh, because of lack of deployment tools that give them the ability to deploy their models without any um, uh, expertise in uh, model deployment. Mm. So we need to make it much easier and much, much accessible for anyone to just test models and start using them like any other uh, um, you know when you use a, a, a new uh, a python uh, kit 
Ah, yes, yes. Mm. Import, uh, when you import a uh, Python Avila. package. Uh, package. Oh, okay, when you uh, want to test a new Python package, you just need to Kit is okay. It's, a, it's also a good, good way to say. Okay. So when you want uh, to test a new uh, Python kit, you just need to import it and you can use it in your Python code. Any developer can do it. But if someone wants to test a pre-trained model, you need, you need to be expert in deploying models. You need to know what, what are the tools for deploying this model and how to approach this model and how the data needs to be when he send it to this model and it's hard and most of the companies doesn't reach there and yeah. I think that's the barrier that we need to take out from the equation and that's what help in one year from now much more companies get their AI journey and uh, much advanced. Uh, uh, put make their uh, advance their AI journey, get them a little bit more mature in their AI gr growth of AI initiatives. Yeah, yeah I thought there's 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 what there's and I think because we're, we're this conversation is like amazing, but it's always it always takes a little bit longer than you think, right? But I like to summarize it because yes, um, what you're saying is basically there's and this is happening in IT and has been happening in IT for many, many years already, more like IT focus and now like more of a, like a pivot to AI <laughs> is that there's more, there, ne there needs to be more abstraction. So we need to remove those complexities. We need to take those complexities of deploying it, the hardware, the resources. We need to take that out of the equation and just make it like, next next finish right um as in okay model try it amazing this is the data set done so summarizing it a little bit the we're we've already been extracting like run ai i'm talking run ai a little bit because hey that's where i work so we've already been abstracting some of the complexities of getting resources to uh getting uh, ai workloads to run on the resources they need whenever they need it right and yeah. and don't have to worry about if it's actually physically available the next thing is abstracting those complexities of actually trying a model as and the experimentation is less building the model the experimentation is more trying the pre tink model seeing if it gets the results i need in a very very easy way therefore removing even more barriers of companies adopting ai and developers using ai in 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 their applications yes exactly from taking from experts only to plug and play yeah pl right right plug and play wow if we can get there it'll be a few years i think right yeah but anyways sure than you think peeny it's been amazing thanks a lot for the conversation Thank you. We want to end with a lightning round. Can I Absolutely. proceed to the, can I proceed to the lightning round of fun questions, Heise? Yes, you can. All right. So here we go. The magic lightning round. Are you ready? Yeah. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> Name the person you'd most like to meet and have a dinner with, and that person could be either living or historic. And why? Okay, so I will do it not uh, living or historic, but from the future. Oh, I want to uh, to meet myself 20 years from now and to see if actually. Oh, man, I'm a little scared to do that myself. Yeah, but it's amazing because I won't can, be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you can okay, get sorry. much better perspective of the, the journey that we are doing, doing right now. And uh, I want to know if th the civilization got to the, to the position that uh, I think that there should be uh, in AI, but in a lot of other things. All right. That was, you know, he surprised me with that one, Heis. Um, okay. Question number two. If you didn't have this career in AI, this career in innovation, what would you be doing? I think that uh, 
I would be a teacher. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, because as a teacher, you can change you can change not only what you are doing, but what a lot other people will do in their future. By like being a teacher, you're an influencer. Yeah, you're an influencer. You can change other people's life. And I think it's this is the mo most amazing that anyone can do. It influence others' life. These are some pretty impressive answers. Wow, yeah. It, it, it almost sounds like we prepped them. <laughs> but we no. didn't. And just but so we did it. I just wanted to add that. No, sorry. Yeah. It's, it's, I wanted to add that. We didn't prep him. The answers are amazing. Thanks. See, this uh, is why we need guests. Right. And Okay, so the best vacation you have ever taken was to where Okay. and why? Or is it the place you most want to go is you haven't been yet? Actually, um, I can't wait uh, to the summer vacation. This summer? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be in uh, Thailand with my uh, family. Oh. And it's going to be like the first vacation with the whole family. Uh, and uh, it's going to be like a long vacation. How a long? Few week, a few uh, weeks. And uh, I just Enjoy. can't wait. Yeah. How did you guys choose Thailand over anywhere else in the globe? Um, I've been there in my honeymoon with my wife. Uh, it carries special memories. Yeah, it was uh, like 10 years ago. And uh, I remember that we said that we have to take our family when we got one. So this is the... So time. your children are going to see where their parents went on a honeymoon. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. Um, the best book you... Now, whoever watched our inaugural podcast episode got a taste of highs. So, uh, and of me, um, Heise answered this question by saying, well, never mind. Okay. The best book you've read recently, or maybe the best book you've ever read and why? Actually, a book about AI. Did you, do you fall asleep to reading books about AI? Yeah, actually in the last uh, years, uh, I read only, uh, like, uh, you know, academic researchers and about AI, like this, about AI and other things, uh, philosophic. But uh, if I want to do something uh, for uh, you know for fun, uh, uh, it's less uh, reading, but uh, seeing movies and. Uh, so you wouldn't read? You haven't read? You haven't read a book by Israel's famous Shai Agnon recently? Shai Agnon, no. But, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's been a lot of time uh, when I read. Uh, a novel. The last time, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, lastly. Great answer, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> lastly, and maybe my favorite question is, share with us an interesting skill or hobby you have that perhaps people who know you around the office or just people who know you in general don't know that you have. It could be a skill or a hobby. Uh, I can fly. No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I have a private uh, pilot's license. <laughs> no, <laughs> no? no. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a brown belt in jiu jitsu. Oh, you know jiu jitsu? Yeah. Yeah. I've been I, practicing for uh, years when I was a child. Yeah. Wow. You didn't even ask me that question. Uh... I think I did. Didn't I say that? No, I don't think so. Not in our first episode. So I have to answer it now. Okay. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Pini is my, uh, I think my brother from another mother because um, my skill is I'm, I'm actually a second degree black, black belt in karate. Wow. Amazing. That's all right. So I won't make you guys, I won't get on your guys' bad side then, I guess. Yeah. I started from karate, but uh, I didn't feel uh, connected so yeah. I, I tried the uh, jiu-jitsu and uh, from the second lesson I, I felt really attached to it so uh, I uh, kept uh, practicing uh, jiu-jitsu for years and uh, even uh, participate in uh, some uh, competitions and uh, I have a brown belt yeah that's pretty legit well Thank you so much to everybody who's listening um, or watching. 
This has been the second episode of our podcast. Uh, it's and Pini, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again uh, for inviting me. It was, it was amazing. Time. Yeah, very very enlightening conversation. So until next time, stay well, everybody.